Did you know that the number of orphaned Linux kernel modules has doubled in the last two years? Meaning Linux kernel modules that just simply don't have maintainers, that, no, that nobody is responsible. It has doubled in the last two years. Uh, th this to me is, is wild. This is crazy. I, 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 am, I am dumbfounded by the fact that this is actually happening. I, I, I published this article earlier today and I want to, uh, I'm gonna read it to you now because it, it, it's, it's nuts to me, it's nuts. Here I go, quoting myself. Over the last few days, a number of Linux kernel modules have officially become orphaned, meaning they no longer have a maintainer to look after them in any way. And then here's a here's a screenshot from one of them uh, uh, about the uh, the core temperature driver uh, from uh, from Intel. It's marked as orphaned for now. Um, now, the most recent surge in Orphan Linux kernel modules is due to a round of fairly massive layoffs happening at Intel, with the company reducing total staff by tens of thousands of people before the end of this calendar year. And of course, among those being laid off are multiple programmers who were paid maintainers of Linux kernel modules. A lot of them, a whole lot of them. Uh, things like the Intel CPU temperature drivers, uh, slim bootloader, the time of day clock. Uh, these are all now orphan modules and more are expected to become orphans over the coming couple of months. And this isn't even the first event which has caused a surge in orphan modules in recent history. Uh, back in October of last year of 2024, a wave of Russian programmers and programmers suspected of working with Russian companies were banned from contributing to the Linux kernel entirely and this was in response to President Biden's Executive Order 14071, which expressly forbade Russians from working with or using GPL software made in the USA, which naturally GPL software, the Linux kernel. I, I, sh I should clarify. It didn't, this executive order 14071 didn't forbid the Russians from working on GPL software in America. It forbade American organizations and American companies from working on GPL software that also was being contributed to uh, by Russians. So like if uh, the Linux kernel was run by the Linux Foundation, both of which are really America centric. The Linux Foundation is based in the United States. It's West Coast, right? Uh, and so they can't have known Russian developers working on it. It just you just can't you can't do it. You'll have you'll have all there's all sorts of issues, tons and tons of issues there, right? So this all resulted in a huge number of orphaned modules, tons of them back in last October. And now that the Intel layoffs are happening, even more are coming. All of which begs the question, exactly how many Linux kernel modules now have no maintainer at all, right? <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good thing to know if we're if we're using the the Linux uh, based operating systems, the Linux kernel based operating systems, and we're we're banking on them working for servers and embedded systems and desktops well into the future. How much of those systems? is unmaintained it'd be it's a good thing to know and specifically what systems are unmaintained well luckily figuring that out is actually a pretty trivial task the linux kernel modulars modules with maintainers or which have had maintainers at some point are listed in the maintainers file Right there's a there's a full on file. Uh, let me let me bring this up here so you can see it. There's a full on file that you can go to at uh, kernel.org and it's part of the Linux kernel source code that lists a huge mountain. I mean it's just uh, it's it's a ton. It's a couple thousand different Linux kernel modules. Who maintains them? What's their email address? What's their uh, what's their path? All of that sort of thing singular file so we can easily go through that file to figure out a lot of this information 
And as of yesterday, August 8th, 2025, there were 138 kernel modules specifically listed as having a status of orphan, meaning they have no maintainer whatsoever. They're just, they're just orphaned. But here's the thing. That doesn't tell the full story at all. That, that tells us a little part of the story. What we really need to know is how fast the number of orphan modules is growing, right? How quickly that's spreading. And really importantly, what percentage of all modules are not maintained, right? That's what we need to know. And it turns out both numbers are <laughs> not, not great. <laughs> certainly not uh <laughs> certainly not optimistic um uh for those of you watching the video version here's a chart i put together it's got two bars on it <sighs> this month august of 2025 there are 138 orphan modules two years ago august of 2023 that number was 74 that's a pretty massive jump in two years so over the last two years the number of orphan modules in the Linux kernel grew from 75 or 74, 75 to 138. They nearly doubled. Now let's look at the percentage of orphan modules, right? Since we know that there are roughly 2,496 modules which have an active maintainer, now that's give or take, based on a quick look at the maintainers file, that means that a little over 5% of all Linux kernel modules are officially orphans, or roughly 5.2%. Now I wanna, I wanna call out something here, just full, full transparency so you know exactly what these numbers are. I came up with the number of 2,496. The reality is that's probably not the exact number. It's just rough ballpark. If you look at the Linux kernel module maintainers file, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a mess. You really have to spend a lot of time going through it in real detail to get the number exactly right. I did a couple of quick grocks on it and got rough ballpark. So uh, the, the actual final percentage of 5.2% being orphaned, it might vary by 0.1% in, in either direction, but it's, that's going to be roughly about what it is. And that, I, just, I just wanted to get rough ballpark here. I wasn't looking to get, you know, exactly down to the nitty gritty. But all that aside, that still doesn't tell us the whole story here, right? Because 5.2% 5, 5 being orphaned, okay, yeah, that, that's a lot. There is also another category of kernel modules where the status is listed as odd fixes, right? So there's, there's multiple statuses for a Linux kernel module. They're supported and maintained, basically meaning uh, maintained is someone is volunteering their time to maintain it. Supported is the same as maintained, but someone is paid to do so. Like uh, someone at Intel has a job of maintaining a module. So supported and maintained kind of mean the same thing, but, but supported means there's actually money behind it. Um, and then there's orphaned, which means it's just flat out, there's nobody. And then there's odd fixes. And odd fixes means that it has a maintainer, but they don't have time to do much. <laughs> so, so literally what it, what it, what an odd fixes means is that sometimes, yeah, maybe they'll make a change. Maybe they'll make a bug fix, but whoever is listed as the maintainer simply does not have time to work on whatever that module is. Essentially, that means that those modules are not actively maintained. There is a point person, there is a contact. So they are not officially an orphan, but they're also not in general maintained modules, right? You see what I'm saying here? So if we consider the odd fixes modules and the orphaned modules to be both in a category of not maintained in general, that raises the total percentage of unmaintained kernel modules to roughly 8.6%. Wow. I mean, I mean, we're getting close to one tenth of, of all Linux kernel modules just generally not being maintained. And considering the upcoming layoffs at Intel, uh, because they've done a lot of Intel layoffs already, and there's more on the way. 
uh, and 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 who's em those employees at Intel are the current maintainers of well over 200 different modules, right? The, currently, after some of the layoffs have already occurred, after some, some Intel engineers have already been removed from some modules, resulting in orphan modules, there are still over 200 different modules. I wanna say it's like 230 something uh, of Linux kernel modules that are actively maintained by Intel employees specifically. With so many layoffs coming up, the possibility of non-maintained Linux kernel modules be hitting over 10% of all total modules is not a far-fetched idea. And, and, and this is really important to, to point out here. We're not talking about seldom used niche uh, hardware drivers here, like some random joystick from 1973 that no one's ever used, right? Or a barcode scanner that was only ever used by a gas station in Michigan. No, we're, we're talking about really common things here, like CPU temperature sensors and Intel CPUs, the time of day clock, and all manner of critical hardware support like ACPI, Ethernet drivers, some GPU drivers, and on and on and on. Some really critical stuff. And while it is very reasonable to assume that some of the most critical kernel modules will get new, often volunteer maintainers, thus saving them, from becoming true orphans, many of those modules will fall into an abandoned state. That has been the case over the last few years. Now, the question is, what result will that have on the Linux kernel and the broader Linux ecosystem? And that remains to be seen. We, we truly don't know. I mean, we'll find out. <laughs> we will we will absolutely find out the answer to that pretty quickly um but as of right now we really we really don't know so is the the future of of linux has a significant amount of non-maintained modules in it right that that is an almost undeniable fact of the future of of the linux kernel Right, whether we're talking about hardware drivers or, you know, core operating system components, uh, all, all manner of things, and the and these are all being caused by a wide variety of events. Not just oh, you know, this maintainer retired or this maintainer got tired and didn't want to do it anymore or got hit by a bus or whatever, but we're talking about significant events that are having an impact on the world of open source development, like uh, like that executive order from President Biden. That had a pretty massive impact. And we're still, we're still seeing the effects from that trickle down as, as we're, we're, you know, a good, you know, three quarters of a year on from that taking effect this last October. And, and now we see this massive Intel layoff. And whew, I tell you, I mean, that's, it's a lot. Intel really does and has historically put a huge amount of resources into Linux kernel module development and Linux kernel development in and of itself. As that goes away, what's it going to be replaced by, right? What, when that, when that vacuum is created, what will fill that vacuum? Will it be, uh, some additional, uh, volunteers, which uh, honestly, if you follow Linux kernel development, you already knew that those, those Linux kernel developer volunteers are stretched really thin already in a big, big way. Will it be paid developers from other companies? If so, what other companies? Are we talking about Microsoft, IBM and Red Hat, Amazon? I mean, we've seen a number of companies kind of strong arm their way into Linux development, whether we're talking about desktops or Linux kernel development and, and the like. And the results have not always been fantastic. I mean, we've been seeing the fallout from 
Red Hat's heavy-handed involvement with the open source and Linux kernel and and Linux desktop world, including you know Xorg and Free Desktop and everything else, over the last year or so, where we've seen people being banned and and just weird active political battles coming from Red Hat and IBM and all sorts of stuff. Are we going to see more of that in the Linux kernel? I, I don't know. I truly don't know. I, I think I think the big takeaway here is that the the more rapidly this unmaintained percentage of Linux kernel modules grows, the bigger the vacuum gets and the more uncertain things become. The reality is everything could be fine. Uh, the reality is several companies could step up and and uh, and 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 sponsor a number of developers working on some key components and key mo modules within the Linux kernel world, and uh, it could work out tremendously well. Maybe it'll even work out better than it has in the past with uh, with all the investment from both Intel and the Russian developers and others, or. <laughs> Or that vacuum could be filled by with something we don't like at all. It's really an unknown, but it's worth noticing. It's worth noting that it's that it's happening. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for making it possible to do the work that I do. Uh, I, again, go to lunduke.com. You can grab all the articles, including the one I just read to you now, for free on Locals and Substack. It gets linked from everywhere on X and Patreon and everywhere else. You can just grab links and read it for free. No account necessary. Of course, if you're listening to the audio podcast, which just a mountain of you are, most so many of you love that audio RSS feed. Uh, you can also get it via iTunes and Substack and Spotify and Fountain. Uh, and if you want the video version, there's a bunch of links where you can subscribe to the Lunduke Journal, support the work that uh, the Lunduke Journal does, and grab the video versions of the shows, including downloadable MP4s, which is fancy, uh, all up there at lunduke.com. And with that, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across this fine and glorious intertube of ours, I do declare, end broadcast.